thank you for joining me on this test drive video for the new 2021 Jazz with its hybrid powertrain. And that's really important for us because this car forms part of our plan for having all our mainstream vehicles electrified by 2022. So let's get in and drive it. Now, as soon as you get into the car, you'll feel the, the seat is very supportive, lovely material, and I've automatically put my arm on the armrest, which has got even more padding on there than, than previous. And now I'm looking at the steering wheel, which is two spokes, so a beautiful design. And probably more importantly, it feels really good as well. It has a nice uh, tactile finish to it. But now I'm looking forwards, I can see just how big this glass area is. So because of the incredibly small A-pillars, we have fantastic visibility. So making your uh, enjoyment of driving increased and also increasing safety as well. Not only that, but we have the low flat uh, horizontal dash, which gives us a, a lot better visibility over the top of the dash and the wiper blades are hidden as well. So I think what we need to do now is take it for a drive. So we have our automatic style transmission on the new Jazz. And why, why did I say style? Well, technically it's not an automatic gearbox, um, but from a driving point of view, it's just as simple as an automatic gearbox. So we have our position for park, reverse, neutral, and D for drive, which is what I'm in at the moment. So this will be really familiar for you if you've driven an automatic recently, but if you haven't, don't worry. It is so, so simple. Uh, literally into the car, press the power button, put on the brake, and then you put it into D mode and you don't need to do anything. The car will go through all of its other sort of hybrid modes automatically by itself. Now, B mode, the, uh, the B actually stands for brake. So at the moment, I'm in D for drive, and if I come off the throttle or the accelerator, I will continue um, moving along, and I only slow down because the car's not actually pushing me forwards anymore. In B mode, and all you do, you can drive this all the while in B mode if you want, or all the while in D, or just switch between, it's entirely your choice. But I'm just gonna put it into B mode, and while my foot's on the accelerator, it makes no difference. The difference comes when I take my foot off the accelerator. So when I do that, and I'll do that now we're on the straight, just come down, and you'll feel the car slow down a little bit more than it did before. But the other advantage that you have with B mode is that when you have got your foot off the throttle, it actually gives even more charge into the high voltage batteries in the back of the car. So just to recap, to all intents and purposes, it really is an automatic car. It's only if you are under the bonnet with the technician, it's any different. So you get in, you put it in D, and it is so, so easy to use. Uh, just like a traditional automatic transmission. Now, of course, our ECVT is only part of the story of the powertrain of this vehicle. So, of course, it's hybrid. Uh, and our hybrid is absolutely fantastic because we have three modes. So I can be driving this car purely on electric only. And I can tell that because of the meters in front of me. I'll get little blue lines powering my front wheels is what the icon shows from the hybrid battery at the back of the car. I have a hybrid mode and in hybrid mode, it will actually have the petrol engine running to create electricity, but it is still the electric mode to driving the road wheels because that's most efficient. Then we have our engine mode. And in engine mode, that's where the petrol engine is running. And the petrol engine actually spins the electric motor, which drives the road wheels. So we've got three modes, which are perfectly seamless. And that's why you will never feel a transition between EV, hybrid, or engine mode. Also on this uh, closed circuit, um, some of the surfaces are good, some are not so good. And the, the low friction suspension that we've got on our car is amazing. Now low friction sounds a strange thing to say. What do we mean by that? It, it's free moving. So actually it's going to absorb the, the bumps and lumps and potholes and things that we have on our UK roads really rather nicely. Added to that, we've put some extra sound deadening inside the cabin as well. Again, a really nice touch to take that level of premium feel up into the car. A lot of manufacturers, especially if they're bigger cars, will put 
anti-fatigue seats on the uh, the front seats, so that you can do longer journeys and you, you know you're not suffering with uh, back or leg pains or anything. Even on this short journey, it's like being in my favourite chair. It's supportive, it's comfortable, it's everything you want uh, from a seat. Now we've got a little bit more familiar with the uh, the car itself and our hybrid technology and the, the transmission on this vehicle, um, we can venture into looking at the, the meters. So the, the meter I've got on at the moment is showing me whether I'm in EV, full electric mode, uh, hybrid or engine mode. And that is on our TFT screen. So at the moment, as I say, it's on the hybrid meter because I like that level of information, um, but actually I can have many different things on there. I can have my fuel economy because we have a really fuel efficient jazz. Um, we could have, uh, as we did, we have our speed on here. So we have the, the quickest 0 to 60 of any jazz we've had before. So it's the quickest, most environmentally friendly jazz. And also some of my um, safety features I can actually recap on there. So in that TFT screen, we have an awful lot of information that literally, at the roll of a thumb wheel, I can sort of scroll through and select a new one. On our separate meter now, we actually have, on most of our jazz, it's only thing with the, the nine inch um, screen, we actually have a digital owner's manual. So quite easily you can, you can pop into that, and if you need to discover something about your new jazz or your jazz crossstar, it'll be in there for you. So we've retained our high driving position. Um, people love that, myself included, because it gives you that for good uh, visibility so that you feel safer on the road. Uh, you've got massive amount of glass area, which is tremendous. So my view facing forwards is incredibly deep and incredibly wide. We've already mentioned how narrow the A pillars are and virtually no blind spots. From a driver's point of view, I actually have a driver's knee bag, which is a lovely thing that I've got that I hope I never need to use. This is in addition to the eight airbags we had before. So we have a knee airbag, takes us up to nine. And also I have an airbag that should there be an impact would come out of the side of my seat. Now this is to, um, to protect my head from my, um, my passenger's head. So this is a center airbag taking the, the total of airbags in this car up to 10 which is kind of unheard of really in this kind of this small car sector. So we really have got that big car technology, big car safety with the advantage of being the small, nimble, easy to use, practical car, which is an amazing set of uh, situations. We have eCall, that's a new one for us. The car is now connected, and what do I mean by that? On my behalf, it could phone through to the emergency services. If I had passed out and that's why I'd had an accident, obviously I, I couldn't phone the ambulance service and the car knows exactly where I am, the direction I'm traveling in, so it does it on my behalf. Again, another feature that we hope we're never gonna use, but is lovely to know for that peace of mind. It's in the car and that little sort of guardian angel uh, looking after us. The cup holders, which sit in front of the air vents. So on a warm day like today, I can have a, a can of Diet Coke in there. And of course the air conditioning will keep it nice and cool. But what if I want a cup of hot coffee on a warm day like today? Well, you just close the vent. So the genius behind some of the, the things that seem quite simple when you're using them just proves the quality and the, the extra level you're getting with this car. Now I've got plenty of leg room in the front. Jazz has always been extraordinary for, for cabin space, um, both in the front and the rear. And because we've got a slightly uh, longer wheelbase, as we said, that's, that's really good for, for comfort levels, extra little bit of space in the car, and we've even got extra leg room in the back for our rear seat passengers. So that's improved. And if you have a Jazz right now, I'm sure uh, you've got your lovely magic seats we've kept them for you. It would be um, a terrible thing for us to do to take those away. So they will fold flat, they'll fold up. You can get really large and awkward uh, packages into the car to transport. So now we have Honda Sensing on the Jazz and the Jazz Crossstar. This is not a cost option. This is included in the car for you. And we have a suite of safety features. 
um, which we've never seen on Jazz before. We have a feature called Collision Mitigation Braking System. So it uses the brakes to mitigate um, a collision. So it can work at lower speeds and higher speeds, and it will autonomously put the brakes on if it determines that you are likely to be in a collision and it will do a full emergency brake to minimise the risk of any injury to, um, to the pedestrian. It can also pick on cyclists crossing our path. So it's taken a brilliant feature, collision mitigation braking system, that we had on Civics and CRVs in the past. Never had it on Jazz, but now the latest generation is even better. We have lane keeping assist system never had that on a Jazz before either. So it uses the camera at the top to look at the white lines and it will try and keep us centred on the road. So I get a straight piece of road here and I think I'm not moving the steering wheel. But actually I'm putting tiny micro adjustments in to keep me centred in the road. Well with the camera and the electronic power steering the car does that for me. So whether it's a dual carriageway, a motorway, whatever it is, those straighter roads even though I thought I wasn't doing anything, driver fatigue can sort of set in. Lane keeping assist system reduces that driver fatigue so you can drive for longer without getting so tired. Also, if I was drifting more to the left hand side of the lane, it would sort of steer me into the centre. This is a feature that you turn on by the way, so you don't have to have this on if you don't want to, and it does work at higher speeds. Something that is on by default is a lane departure warning system. So if I was actually going to, to cross over unintentionally, so I've not indicated, but uh, cross over a white line, it would actually give me a warning to say, did you intend to do that? Well, and you can set the sensitivity for uh, normal, um, higher or lower as well, depending how you want that to be in the car. Again, it's just telling me that, you know, make sure you've got both hands on the steering wheel and look where the lines are, you might be getting towards the edge of one of those lines, so be careful. We have road departure mitigation. So this works on a solid line. It can actually apply braking force uh, to, in, to individual wheels that would encourage me back into the lane. So it doesn't eliminate the possibility. All of these systems are an assistance system, but it mitigates that, uh, that likelihood of departing from the road. We have uh, traffic sign recognition. You'll remember from previous jazzes. So that's a really nice feature that allows us to see oh, we're, we're on a 70 mile an hour zone. Um, so we'll stick to that speed limit, but we can even build that into our adaptive cruise control. So again, another nice new feature uh, that we've got on Jazz. So with traditional cruise control, you set it to 50, you're driving along, and somebody in front of you is doing 40. So you have to cancel it or reduce the speed, then when they've gone, you pick it back up again. Our camera-based system now recognises the car in front, and it will slow us down to their speed of 40. And then when they're clear, it will take us back up to our uh, pre-selected speed of 50. But it's a complete package of safety features to really help you get more out of the car. A lot of them are selectable, so you can choose your favourite features and turn them on on the appropriate sections of road for that feature. While we're driving, what we can actually use as well is our Honda Personal Assistant. Now, Honda Personal Assistant, if you're used to uh, Siri or your Google Assistant, is very similar. So you can ask it to find you um, a restaurant or a particular destination. But what it will do, the Honda Personal Assistant, is actually put it into the navigation in your car. Um, it can operate some of the elements of your vehicle as well. So literally by the command of, OK, Honda, you can then ask your car to do various different things for you. So those are my first impressions of the test drive of the new 2021 Jazz. More importantly though, contact your local dealer so that you can experience firsthand a test drive of this fantastic new car.